I believe that we are all being deceived, being sold an untruth. <music> Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles, and welcome to my video on a new War of the Spark spoiler card, Massacre Girl. Now, what was I talking about with all of this? What is the untruth? Well, I don't believe this is actually the Massacre Girl. Now, before we get into all that and my theory on all of this, let's take a look at the card, let's go over the flavor of everything, and then I will present to you my case as to why I don't believe this is the bona fide, genuine Massacre Girl. Okay, so starting out with the card itself, what do you get? Two black, three colorless for a 4-4 legendary human assassin with menace. When Massacre Girl enters the battlefield, each other creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Whenever a creature dies this turn, each creature other than Massacre Girl gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. So, first of all, how does this feel in terms of actually being a Massacre? Well, the minus one, minus one concept that grows as more characters, and not characters, I should say creatures, get taken out, that has a Massacre feel to it. It does definitely fall in line with the concept of Massacre in Magic the Gathering. There are currently three cards, aside from the girl, that use the word Massacre. The Originator is actually a card just called Massacre, and that is two black, two colorless. It's from Nemesis. It's a sorcery that you can play for free if you control a plane and your opponent has, or sorry, if your opponent has a plane and you have a swamp out, you can play this for free. But that's not really the important part. The important part is what the card itself does. And that's all creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. And depicted in the artwork is Krovax. And if you don't know about Krovax, I did a whole video on the tragedy of Krovax. I will have it linked at the end of this video. There will be a list of lore videos. You can just go ahead and click on that playlist and you will find the Krovax video in there amongst other fine offerings. So this is the first massacre card. The second card that mentions it is Massacre Worm. Now this is six mana for a six five. When it enters the battlefield, creatures your opponents control get minus two, minus two until end of turn. And whenever a creature an opponent controls put in a graveyard from the battlefield, that player loses two life. So clearly we start to see a pattern that massacring involves giving multiple creatures minuses. Minus two, minus two, minus one, minus one in case of the girl. Now there is one more card that specifically mentions massacres. This one is Eye Blight Massacre. For those of you who don't know what an Eye Blight is, on the plain of Lorwyn, the elves were very haughty, and they believed that the most attractive amongst them were the most pure. And anything that wasn't beautiful outwardly was just evil. And so they called them Eye Blights. And that is what's going on in this artwork here. The idea is it's an Eye Blight Massacre where they are wiping out the impure in the elf size. Now the bad news is there are eye blights in elven society, but anything not in elven society is automatically an eye blight. If you are not an elf, you are an eye blight. It was an interesting time in Magic the Gathering where elves were evil, and that is not something you normally see. Normally elves are like nature aligned and things like that, so a very interesting divergence. The the flavor text says, I've already seen so much evil, so much darkness. Why do you insist on adding more? And this is Nissa Ravain, an elven planeswalker, talking to Dwynan, a elf from the world of Lorwyn, trying to plead with them to change the way they're doing things. And this gives non-elf creatures minus two, minus two until end of turn, as would make perfect sense with an Eye Blight Massacre. So in terms of the flavor of Massacre Girl, it's an interesting take on it. Obviously, it's got the right feel to it in terms of mechanics. This is pre-established in Magic the Gathering as how Massacre effects will end up working. It is a little bit muddy in that whenever a creature dies this turn, each other creature as well, aside from Massacre Girl, gets a minus one, minus one. But I guess they just wanted to kind of spice it up and give you something to play with. I guess the idea is supposed to be that she goes around taking out a bunch of people but at the same time, it's not 100% clear how mechanically another creature getting wiped out equals everyone else getting minus one, minus one. So there is that minor flavor issue with the card. Now that's not what makes me consider this to be a fraudulent massacre, girl. No, no. But I do genuinely believe that this is not the original massacre girl. 
we have accounts of the original Massacre Girl. There's actually, there's a number of different little snippets. You kind of have to dig around and look for information. There's an Azorius 10 Most Wanted blurb about her where it talks about as a tool of the demon Rakdos, Massacre Girl leaves a trail of terror and murder wherever she goes. She's a contract killer who has eluded capture by threatening the lives of officials who attempt to investigate or detain her. She's notorious for inciting chaos and riot, riots, but whether this is out of personal ambition or at the behest of a client is unknown. The suspect is directly linked with 47 murders and suspected in the massacre of Celestia missionaries in the rubble belt. Put a pin in that because we'll come back to it. The suspect has been classified as untouchable in the past. And what that means is Azoria Senate had actually said that they, there was no legal action allowed to be taken against Massacre Girl. And this was in the past, although that status is now up for redefinition in closed meetings of the Senate. Recently, all of her records were either stolen or destroyed in a fire at the South Records Hall. Now, all of this speaks to, at some point, somebody in the Azorius having hired her to use her for their nefarious purposes. But I said we would put a pin and come back to the massacre of Celestian missionaries in the rubble belt. And this is one of the factors that makes me, and it's the main, it's the main thrust here because we have an eyewitness account that contradicts to a degree what we see with Massacre Girl. Now, before I go into the Celestian account, I do want to cover the other cards that mention Massacre Girl. You have Restore the piece, which just has a quote from Massacre Girl, where it says you can always count on the Azorius to ruin a party. And that's not that important, but I wanted to bring it up as it is a snippet and we're talking about her. But the Thrill Kill Assassin is another piece in that puzzle that leads me to believe we're not actually looking at the original Massacre Girl. So Thrill Kill Assassin is a Rakdos cult member. One black, one colors for a one, two with death touch. It has Unleash, which means... You can have it come into play with a plus one, plus one counter on it, but it can't can't block if it does. So then basically it's just going all out. But the flavor text, the flavor text is where we find the key information. As the bounty on Massacre Girl rose, so did the number of imitators. So we already know Massacre Girl has imitators. So there are people who, as she gains in, in prestige and more people know about her, more people want to act like her. Now, there are multiple parts of this story. It's in Praise of the World Soul, specifically mentioned in part two and part three. What the story revolves around is there's a young Celestian missionary who starts to hear the, the voice of the world soul. So she takes a small sapler, sapling of a guild tree and takes it off to start like a little enclave, kind of out to a degree in the wilderness. Now, this whole place gets all built up, and at first they think they're going to have problems with the Grull, but one morning out of nowhere, the gates burst open and in stride a bunch of Rakdos who have been specifically paid to do this. It comes up when they're asked, why are you doing this, and who sent you, and it's like, payment's been made, that doesn't matter. But the woman Cecily, who is the main focus of the story, she describes Massacre Girl thusly. To Sicily, she looked like an ugly doll, starved to skeletal form with a fake painted smile. All right? Now, Massacre Girl is a, is a widely celebrated character in basically Rakdos mythology. In all honesty, um, she's, she's, she's pretty insane and well-known. People are terrified to testify against her. Basically, the father of one of her victims wanted to try and testify against her. And what happened was Massacre Girl wiped out the entire male side of the family, wiped out the entire male lineage and blinded every single female in that family line. So that's what happens if you mess with Massacre Girl. Now, let's return to the she looked like an ugly doll starved to skeletal form with a fake painted smile. When we take a look at the artwork on Massacre Girl, what we see here is someone who's not starved to skeletal form. And it's not like Massacre Girl was starved because she didn't have the resources to eat. She's a, she's a highly paid, sought after assassin. So she's choosing not to eat. Now, if you look at the artwork here, this girl is clearly not starved. She is not skeletal looking, nor is she ugly. On top of that, you can see on top of her regular smile that she doesn't have a full-on fake painted smile. She just has the wisps up at the sides, just the corner pieces, which really speak to someone who may have heard the legends of Massacre, Massacre Girl and is trying to imitate them. She does the same things 
right down to the confetti because and another part of the story where this raid is happening on the Celestian outpost, Massacre Girl actually ends up throwing confetti on the bodies as she sashays away because to her, it's all a party. Now, when you combine the fact that this clearly isn't Massacre Girl from the first-hand description that we have, the face painting isn't right, the look of her isn't right, it doesn't match. When you combine that with the fact that it's stated that more and more imitators are coming as her bounty goes up, as her renown increases, more people want to be her. I strongly believe that the original Massacre Girl is long gone. One of the one of the effects of attacking the Celestian outpost is this Celestian outpost was originally being harried by the Grawl, and the reason for that is the Celestian emissary had found a child, a Grawl child that had been abandoned and brought the child into the enclave. The Grawl demanded the return of this child and the Celestians refused. After Massacre Girl basically wiped out almost the entire enclave there, one of the surviving members went to the Grawl and lied to them and said Massacre Girl was responsible for the death of the child as well. So with that information, the Grawl basically swore a blood feud against her, which means they would go at her relentlessly. And this isn't going, the, the Grawl aren't going to be swayed the same way that you can sway regular citizenry. They're not going to listen to the edicts of the Azorius. They're not going to be swayed by someone saying, we're going to take vengeance on and wipe out part of your family. The Grawl would unrelentingly go after someone who had destroyed one of their own. So my belief is the original Massacre Girl was actually taken out by the Grawl somewhere. There's no record of it. And this is an imitator who is just the best at being Massacre Girl currently. If you are the one who is being an imitator of Massacre Girl and you're the best at it, you're going to wipe out anybody else who's trying to take your title. So in, in my view, this is a Massacre Girl, not the Massacre Girl. Now this one is very much open to interpretation. You can have your own view of it. I may not be right on this, but I do heartily believe that based on the information provided that I could dig up in different places, that this isn't actually her. This is one of the imitators who desperately wants to be the original. So let me know what you guys think of all of that. And I am gonna go ahead and roll the golden scroll. Unfortunately, because I'm slightly unprofessional, I didn't actually pull up the list of people that we need to add to it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that up while the scroll is rolling on by because these are the people who support me on Patreon and through channel memberships. And we actually have a bunch of new people to welcome on the channel membership side specifically. So while I buy time by talking, all right, here we go. Here are the names. So we've got Frederick Gerard. Loco for MTG, Gavin Jeffries, welcoming back Anu Vlad, who took a break away from Magic. Glad to have you back, brother. Captain Jacked Pickle, formerly known as Mr. Pickle, and Iman Palmieri. Thank you all for supporting my channel. It means a lot. Glad to have you on the Golden Scroll. And to all of you, I say, I shall see you tomorrow.